Hey, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida, and today on Boo Ray Explains, we are going to talk about incident light versus reflected light. This is one of those things that seems a little bit more complicated than it is. It's actually very, very simple. I think part of the problem is that we use the word incident, which not everyone knows what that word means. If I said to you direct light versus reflected light, it might be easier to understand. And very simply, uh, if you're outside, you're taking a picture of somebody outside, and they're being lit by the sun, right? Incident light is the light that is shining on the person. That's the light the light shining on the person. Reflected light is the light that's bouncing off the person and going into your camera. And these are two different types of light at two different levels. And the reason it's important to know the difference between incident light and reflected light is because your camera's meter works off of reflected light. It is measuring the light that is coming into the camera that is reflecting off the person and coming into the camera, right? But if you use a light meter, to go and find out what the exposure is on a person, it uses incident light. The light meter goes, you go to where the person is, you place the light meter at the person and you point the light meter towards the light source, like the sun. And it will tell you that light source is giving you an exposure of X and that's the exposure you use in your camera. But if you're using your camera, it's catching the reflected light off the person and telling you this light is giving you exposure X and that's what you set in your camera. And what's the difference? Well, the difference is that light doesn't reflect the same off of every single subject. Now, I made a video about this. Uh, let's see, which would be the good one to start on this? The camera new renders for neutral gray? That's probably the best one. Go check out the video called The Camera Renders for Neutral Gray, and I'll put a link right up here. And it explains how light reflects off of dark surfaces uh, less than it reflects off of light surfaces. So you can take a picture of two people in the exact same location with the same exact light, and you will get two different exposures if you are metering from incident, I'm sorry, if you are metering from reflected light, you will get two different exposures because the light that is reflecting off the black shirt is not as bright as the light reflecting off of the white shirt. And we get all of our metering most of the time from the meter that's inside our camera, and that is reflected light. So basically your camera is lying to you quite frequently as to what the correct exposure is because the reflected light changes all the time based on the thing the light is reflecting off of. However, if you take an incident light meter and you go over and you get a reading, it's gonna be the same. It doesn't matter what you're taking a picture of because the incident light meter is just reading the sun. The sun hasn't changed. So you can put in a black shirt, white shirt, plaid shirt, paisley shirt, doesn't matter. You're gonna get the same reading every single time. So you're gonna get a consistent reading. And there are photographers to this day who will use an incident light meter when they are outdoors. Like I know wedding photographers, mostly old timers, who will, to this day, if they're like doing group shots, they will take a incident light meter and they will find out exactly what that sunlight is, what the correct exposure is, and they will set their camera for that and they will shoot them all that way. Because that way they get consistent and they know correct exposure. Also, the older you are and, and the more you've been doing this, the more fanatical you are about having the exact correct exposure. You know, the younger you are, the more you're like, well, I'll fix it in post. I'll go in the raw file and I'll just move it around a bit like that. But um, photographers who had been doing this a long time, they didn't have that advantage. So they had it drilled into them again and again and again. Make sure you've got the right exposure. Make sure you've got it right in camera. So many of them to this day still will carry around an incident light meter to get the correct exposure. And I use one too. I don't use it on location, but I have one in my studio. And when I'm setting up for studio portraits, I will take an incident light reading off of my main light to make sure I've got the correct exposure. So that's it. That's instant light versus reflected light. It's really not that hard to understand. Sometimes the words we use in photography can make it a little bit more difficult. Be sure and throw me a subscribe and give me a like and click the uh, notification button so that you'll know when more of these videos are coming out. I've got a lot of them. If you haven't watched the other videos in this series, basically by the time I'm done, I'm just going to teach you everything you need to know about photography with the series. <laughs> That's the, that's, that's the goal uh, that I'm going for. Uh, also, be sure and check me out on Instagram. Just go to add Boo Ray Perry and join my group on Facebook, which is called Pro Photo Talk with Boo Ray Perry. All right, stick around. There's a lot more to learn. Mm -hmm.